Pro tip number four, how to do maintenance on your ring sizing machine. So tonight we'll be going through how to maintain that guy right there. Here's some tools that we'll be using, some solvent, solvent bucket with a solvent brush, a sharpening stone, coarse and fine grit, some different uh, grit nail files, some gloves, rubber dead blow hammer, large flathead screwdriver, Allen wrench set, and some grease and paper towels. So let's get started here. We'll get some gloves on here first. Stay nice and clean. This is a little bit of a messy job. I first noticed that I needed to do some maintenance on uh, on this guy when it was getting a little rough operating the handle. I could, I could feel like it was a gritty, chunky feel and wasn't sure what was going on so I decided to tear it apart and see what what was wrong. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, first thing you need to do is remove this handle here. And one quick tip with this, make sure that your handle is screwed all the way into your machine because uh, if there is a gap um, it'll put a weak point on that bolt and it could bust that bolt off. And if that does happen, what you can do is get a new bolt. This is a 12 millimeter, 2 inch long uh, bolt and it's a 1.75 pitch. And what you can do is cut the head off of this and grind a, a flat spot so you can get a wrench on it if, if you ever have to. Um, and replace the bolt. And you can get a, a tap to clean out the thread on the machine and the handle and again it's a 12 millimeter 1.75 pitch so at that point handles off go ahead and bring you over here this guy just slides right off like so and this one here you have four uh, uh, allen head screws you loosen all those up and that slides right off like so set that aside oh one thing um, you can see uh, here that this plate will actually come off, uh, but there's no real need to take this apart. Um, you can you can look down look down through here and see that uh, make sure that it's nice and clean, uh, nothing uh, impeding uh, uh, this piece here, the panels, the expanding panels. Um, you can run some solvent down if, if need be, but really I would recommend not taking this apart. Each panel is numbered, so they have to be in sequence for it to even work. Um, so, But again, no real need to take that apart. So, won't be doing that. So, we got that off. Um, got the handle off. And this piece here, you may need a dead blow hammer to remove it. Um, if, if the gears are, are uh, getting a little messed up, you can use your hammer here to tap it out, but it should really just fall right out like so. I'll go ahead and put that in the solvent bucket. And this piece here should pop right out like so. Now if it doesn't, um, oh, one other thing, there's a bottom plate down here. Let me pull that off for you. So again, there's just a set screw that holds that in place. Just loosen that and that'll pop right off. Um, set that aside. So if this thing does not come off right off the bat, let me get that one piece back here. One trick that I learned that you can do set that in there and grab a small bolt um, and you see how it free spins here? That means that it's disengaged. It's It's not making contact with the with the ram uh, gears gear mechanism um, I'll go into more detail on that a little bit later but for right now if this thing is getting is really sticky and not wanting to come out what you can do is run that up until it does engage and then use the gears to to get it up and started coming out and then you can use your flathead screwdriver and, and there's uh, some gears back here, some cogs that you use to leverage on. Let me just turn it around so you can see. So what I'm doing is just picking up like so, 
to pop it out. Okay, so I'll put that in the solvent bucket. And this guy I'll put in there as well. Get those cleaned up in a little bit. Now at this point, what you want to do is just basically clean this housing real good. You can get some solvent on your um, paper towel if need be, but just like cleaning a, a rifle, you want to uh, run that towel through. Get any any uh, metal shavings out that may be in there. So I'll run, clean that one, and then also clean this one here, real good. So once that's nice and clean, that uh, housing is is good to go. So now come back to these guys. You want to make sure and get these nice and clean, these in the solvent. And just wipe them down, get, uh, get that grease off, inspect it, see how, how it looks. This one shouldn't really have to do anything on this. If there is, if you notice like a little nick, or something on one of these gears um, then you can start taking it down with your stone uh, there it may or may not have a nick I've noticed that this one here when I did the maintenance on it originally this is the one that had the most problem so you want to inspect the, the gears on here and then grab your stone and start with your coarse grit and just uh, you don't have to take a whole lot off just you need to get that nice and smooth because what's happening is uh, as these gears get a little bit worn um, most likely because putting too much force on it I you know I'm guilty of that I was trying to make a Morgan ring real quick and I just got to slow it down and and uh, anneal a whole lot more um, but uh, anyhow uh, if you put too much force on these then you're going to get some a uh, little bit of metal raised up, raised up, and it'll hit the uh, the housing on the machine. So you just take the stone and start uh, taking it down. Then from the coarse grit to the fine grit, and then to the coarser uh, nail file, then to the medium, then to the fine. You should have a really nice smooth polish on that, and then back to the solvent bucket to clean up, clean it up. And we'll get that wiped off real good. And then we'll put some uh, some grease on there. Make sure you get inside the teeth real good, all around on the uh, on the cylinder. And then same thing with uh, with this guy here. Preset it real nice. Okay. So now we're ready to reinstall. So this guy slides in like so. Hopefully nice and smooth. There we go. And we'll put this back in here. And this will go back over there. I'm, I'll go ahead and uh, you want to go ahead and screw this down all the way. I'll just do uh, two right now just to speed things up. Now the machine I had before this was a Pepe tool. It was a good machine. I, I really had no reason to get rid of it. I just wanted to try a Durston out. And I'm happy with both really. Um, the Durston is probably a little bit easier to get a hold of. 
Uh, very well known name and top quality and it may be a little bit beefier than the Pepe tool. Uh, and there's many, many different types of, of uh, ring sizing machines out there. And the design should be very similar to this one uh, as far as disassembly and reassembly. Um, so I, I, I haven't taken the Pepe apart, but uh, the Durston, as you'll, you can see, it's pretty darn easy. So to get more into detail on this guy here, I noticed that um, that when I first got the machine, um, I dropped the handle, I, I pulled the handle down, and the ram fell down. And then I, I couldn't in, I couldn't engage the ram. I thought it I thought it broke. I thought I had a just a paperweight at that point. But looking at it and kind of studying it, I noticed that uh, right when the ram is all the way down, the cogs don't engage. It, it just free spins. See there? So what you want to do is set this um, this piece here to a location where it will never go again uh, when you put the long handle on. And then at that point, you can raise up on the ram and then engage the gears. And I'll just put a spacer to make sure it doesn't come down. But now, when you put the handle back on, it will never disengage because the handle is going to hit the table and, and block it. So at that point, go ahead and put this back on, put our handle back on, you want to make sure to get that all the way in when you're operating it. Oh, the grease, grease sure is slippery, isn't it? There we go. Nice and tight. Make sure that always stays tight. So now, when you go down, it doesn't fall off because the handle's blocking it. And you're ready to, to make rings again. Put the collar back on, the base plate on the ram. I won't take time to screw it in, but just screw in that uh, Allen screw there and you're good to go. And that's about it. Um, just uh, just be be patient with the machine and and keep an eye on it. Um, you want to just take care of your equipment. You take care of your equipment, your equipment will take care of you. So anyhow, I hope you liked the video. Uh, be sure to check out my uh, website on jasonsworks.etsy.com. Uh, I've got some other videos as well on my YouTube channel. Be sure to check those out and subscribe if you haven't already and let me know what you'd like to see next I'm thinking I wouldn't mind doing I, I did have a request on how to fix a wobbly coin so I might do that next um, also I was thinking about uh, <clears throat> all these plugs and mistakes here um, that they're 90 percent silver and I was thinking about doing some sand casting and, and show you guys uh, what to do with with your scrap silver and uh, anyhow let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.